Hello and welcome to the Well Church on YouTube. Um, it's great to uh, be together in this way this morning. So hello if you are new to the Well Church, welcome along. And a big hello, shout out to uh, all the kids. It's great to see you as well. Uh, great to be together. Now, maybe uh, this week you're getting over the shock. Maybe you're thinking, ah, oh, we've survived another week and, and actually beginning to get into a routine and starting to uh, get into this for the long haul. I think we've got to be real about this. We've got some hard times ahead. Uh, things may get worse uh, before they get better. But through this, I want to remind us, church, that we have a remarkable opportunity to show and to spread the love of God through this time. And I'm so keen that we don't miss this once in a lifetime opportunity to show the love of God in our nation. I think it's, um, it's possible that we can find energy in a crisis, you know, at times like this, um, where maybe novelty and adrenaline motivate us uh, to action and so on. But I think it's another thing to find energy for the long haul. And this morning, I want us to look at something in the Bible that is going to help us to find a motivation to keep going, to keep loving Jesus, to keep loving those around us for the long haul. We're going to look at a Bible passage today that's going to uh, open our eyes to a, a deeper motivation. And uh, just to say, kids, you're really welcome to listen into this. We're going to tell a story this morning and then we're going to think about what it was like to be part of that story. And also for the kids now, we've got some resources online. So if you visit the Well Church website, thewellchurch.org, if you go to resources, there's a drop down there for kids resources. And we're going to be putting some uh, stuff on there each week that is relevant to the talk uh, that we are are showing here on YouTube. Now, one thing that's really well stocked in the shops, if you've uh, been able to get out, is Easter eggs, because it's just two weeks away now, uh, two weeks till Easter. And so we are going to be looking at the Easter story over the coming weeks. And we're going to start today with um, something that happened uh, just about a week before uh, Easter. We're going to be looking at an amazing story of devotion, of love, of sacrifice, about this woman who pours a really expensive bottle of perfume right over Jesus' feet. Now some in the room said, including Judas, said uh, that this was very wasteful and we're going to dig into that and have a look at that. So if you've got a Bible, turn with me to John uh, chapter 12. And we're going to start at verse 1. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here, a dinner was given in Jesus' honour. Martha served, while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took out about half a litre of pure nard, an expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It's worth about a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. As keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was in it. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. Meanwhile, a large crowd of Jews found out that Jesus was there and came, not only because of him, but also to see Lazarus, who had been raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to kill Lazarus as well. For an account of him, on account of him, many Jews were going over to Jesus and believing in him. So let's have a look at what's going on here. 
This story is about Jesus visiting the house of Mary, her sister Martha and their brother Lazarus. And it's really important to see who these people were. Lazarus, already drawing a crowd, we see already famous uh, for being raised from death to life by Jesus. Remarkable, wonderful stuff. And that was drawing a crowd then. But it's important to see these were friends of Jesus before Jesus raised him from the dead. That was the whole reason why Jesus came, because this family were his friends. You can read about that in John chapter 11. So this story is about love first and then gratitude second. Now I'm really grateful that Jesus died to pay for the wrong stuff that I've done. I'm so so grateful for that. I'm so grateful that Jesus has given me new life in him and that I don't have to fear death because uh, I, I'm secure in Jesus in that. I'm so grateful for all of that. But when I come to Jesus, when I worship, when I pray, I'm overwhelmed by who he is. There's no one else in heaven and earth like Jesus. And I just love him. I just love him. And so this story is first about love and devotion. The gratitude is built on that foundation. So imagine the scene. They're all sat down in this house for a great big meal. All the disciples were there. Lazarus and Mary and Martha were there as well. And, and maybe many others besides. I, imagine the scene. It might be hard at the moment. Your, your house might seem quite empty. Or it might seem very full. I don't know. Um, but imagine the scene of a house full of people. A big birthday party or, or, or something like that. Just absolutely chocked full of people. Um, and have you ever been in one of those moments at a time like that where everything stops? I have. I, I remember uh, doing a family meal um, in our house and uh, we were doing roast potatoes for everybody. And uh, everybody was there chatting and I, I took the roast potatoes out of the oven. And I don't actually know what happened. I just seemed to, I didn't slip, uh, I didn't burn myself, I just let go of the dish and, and they all fell to the floor and everything stopped and everybody looked round. And it would have been one of those moments, wouldn't it, when everybody just, what's happening? What's, what's going on? What, Mary, what are you doing? It would have been one of those moments. And what had happened is Mary had gone to get her perfume, her pure nard perfume. And she had poured the whole lot onto Jesus. You know, this was a lot of perfume. Um, has, has anyone ever done anything for you um, to thank you that seems out of proportion? Yeah, we, we had um, uh, Linda at, at work had been doing some work with uh, some others and uh, just as a thank you um, just a personal thank you she'd been bought a gift and it turned out it was really quite an expensive gift and oh it was wonderful it was amazing but at the same time you it, it kind of stops you. you you it's lovely but maybe a little bit awkward and this was really expensive perfume it was a thing called nard, which grows on a tree in the Himalayas. Now, that's a long way in that day and age. That's a long way from India and Nepal and so on uh, down to um, uh, Israel. A long way. This was expensive stuff. I was having a quick look. Chanel Number no. 5 or Hugo Boss. You can buy a bottle of that um, if you're buying that for your loved one for Christmas or whatever else. Um, they're, they're about 50 or 60 pounds. And that's that's a big a big statement, a big gift. But this stuff was tens of thousands of pounds. This was a massive thing. And she poured a pint of the stuff over Jesus. Half a litre, a pint. That's like, that's like this much. That's always good, isn't it? Uh, this much. She just poured all of that right over Jesus' feet. So extravagant. I mean, feet were normally washed with water. But 
this was another level. She had no regard of the value of that to her. She wanted to give her very best possession to Jesus. And then just think about what all of that perfume would have done. The smell it would have spread. One lunchtime recently, um, and I was still working in the office, uh, I, I popped a DIY shop to get some uh, uh, compost. Um, and I thought it would be a good idea to get on the potting compost. Um, but they had these bags of farmyard manure, a sealed bag of farmyard, farmyard manure. I thought, what, what could possibly go wrong? So I grabbed this at lunchtime, stuck it in the car. And guess what? At five o'clock when I got back in the car, the whole car was filled with the aroma of farmyard manure. And even after I'd taken it out later on, um, uh, people got in the car and said, what's that smell? Uh, you know, driving around with the windows open. Smells can really fill a place. And, and this perfume that Jesus had, it was, um, had poured over him. It was like, I think those, you know, those tiny little bottles of essential oils that you get, lavender and kumquat and whatever it is. Um, and, and, you know, you have your bath and you put three drops in the bath and the whole bathroom smells of lavender and whatever. Well, have you ever had that and maybe uh, have you ever spilt that on, on your skin or the carpet or your clothes? It just stinks. It, 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 the, the smell persists. And uh, imagine a pint of something like that being poured over Jesus' feet. He, you'd smell it from the outside. It says um, the whole house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. And I'm sure that crowd outside could smell it as well. And this was a week before Jesus died on the cross. And I'm convinced that he would not have washed that smell off. Jesus no doubt went to the cross with the aroma of Mary's devotion in his nostrils. What an amazing So different people there had different opinions of this. It says that Judas, who betrayed Jesus, and maybe others as well, thought, what a waste. That's what we're told. We're told, he, but he wasn't thinking about devotion. He was thinking about himself because he was a thief and a crook. He was stealing from the money bag. And it's easy when somebody does something good for someone else, for us, to think, why not me? And I think thinking like that can stop us from doing good for others. But Mary was just really straightforward here and simple. She wanted to show her devotion to Jesus. And it turns out Jesus was very comfortable with this. She, she pours it on him and he's, he, he defends her and says, no, this is, this is fine. This is a good thing. And this is something I find my difficult to get my head around and actually I, I maybe I kid myself that my biggest issue with this passage is that Jesus was comfortable with this if I think that I realize quickly actually my biggest issue here is the reality of Mary's example of doing something so lavish and would I be in a place to do something so lavish for Jesus but the reason Jesus was comfortable with this was because this was a preparation for a one-off event. His all-conquering death on the cross. His once and for all death on the cross. Mary's devotion here was part of a bigger picture. And Jesus says, you will always have the poor. That is so true. Even 2,000 years later, we still have the poor. Even in the midst of this coronavirus, we still have the poor. And we need to be looking out for them because those are the people who are going to find it harder to access uh, friendship, maybe, through social media. They're going to find it harder to access some of the um, uh, 
provision in their hardship. And we still have the poor with us. We need to remember the poor. But you see, the implication here as well is Jesus saying, and you'll always have the resources to provide for the poor, which is also true. We all still have the ability to help those who are poor. But you see, this story centres around devotion to Jesus. And everything else comes from that. What about you? Does your story centre around devotion to Jesus right now? Is devotion to Jesus the thing that everything else in your life is flowing from? This morning I was uh, reading the BBC News Summary and I scrolled down uh, to the bottom. Everything is all about um, the coronavirus. And down at the bottom uh, I got to the title um, Need Something Different section, which was a pleasant relief from virus news. There was an interview with uh, Perry from the band uh, Little Mix that I think was recorded some time ago um, and a story about the crocodile that thought it was a dog. I'm saving that one uh, for my tea break later. But I think the challenge for us as Christians now is, is coronavirus the big story in your life? I mean, sure, yeah, it's a big deal. It's a big issue. But has devotion to Jesus slipped to the bottom? Has devotion to Jesus in your life slipped to the section at the bottom of when we're fed up of everything else and we just need something different? Or is devotion to Jesus the story that your life centres around even now? Kids, if you're still listening, then um, just a reminder, there's some activities for you to do. I'm just going to make two quick points. Uh, and, and, and then um, we are uh, done. We can discuss this in our groups. But first thing first. Firstly, are you living on personal motivation right now? Is that your motivation? Like Judas. Judas was motivated by his personal gain. Is that where you are? Maybe you're in self-survival mode right now. And, and, and I know some of us are. Um, but even as you're looking after those in your house or your families, even as we're working hard uh, to serve others and bless others and to keep things going, I think we need to be wise and examine our motivations. Because it's still possible to do all that good, but for our motivation maybe even to be looking good. You see, like as the church, as the well church, our aim is not making a name for ourselves at the moment. Our aim has not changed. It's about helping people come to know the good news of Jesus. So as a church, we might not be running loads of activity now to serve the wider community. And so we need to be getting on board with things that other people are doing. Um, things like food banks where they're already connected to people. They already have mechanisms in place and to signpost people. And so if you want to support the food bank, uh, next Sunday, April the 5th, I'm going to leave uh, my car boot open on the drive from 2 till 4 on Sunday afternoon. And if you want to make donations to the food bank, uh, then uh, please do that. I, th I, I understand some of the things that they're particularly looking for at the moment is um, tinned fruit um, and uh, UHT milk uh, and tinned meat, uh, things like that, and no doubt pasta and rice and so on. Um, they're actually doing okay for things like uh, tinned veg and breakfast cereal. But you can check out the Trussell Trust website and they have a, a shopping list of things that they need and things they're doing okay on. So things like food banks, signing up for the NHS to be a helper there. I've heard a number of people have been doing that. That's great. And other schemes like that. Um, and also serving people in our streets. So important. These are the people we're going to be living next to when this is all over. So it doesn't have to have a well church banner on it for it to be a good thing for us as the well church to be involved in. Our aim is to serve others out of the love that we have for Jesus, driven by the love that we've received from him. 
because my second point is this, devotion creates extravagant action. It wasn't just gratitude for giving her brother his life back that motivated Mary. Before that, they were Jesus' friends. They loved Jesus. Mary's devotion to Jesus was what created this extravagant action. Adrenaline and novelty will only take us so far as we seek to uh, be a blessing at this time. We can all find energy in a crisis, but what is going to fuel us for the long haul? Devotion to Jesus is what creates extravagant action. Devotion to Jesus is what creates that aroma that fills the house and the area around. And it's devotion to Jesus that will mark us out as those who run for the long haul full of love. So let's maintain our devotion to Jesus. Let's cultivate that through worship, through stillness, through prayer, encouraging others. And let's let that be the fuel for all we do right now. Folks, we are at a pivotal point in modern history. How are you going to seize this moment? How are we going to seize this moment for Jesus? As normal foundations of life are shaken or taken away, many people are going to be looking for a new foundation. And we have a rock whose name is Jesus. He's our friend. And we love him so much. And he loves us so much. He's our saviour. He's the object of our devotion. We don't want to run out of energy, but what we do want to do is for people to see through our actions what it feels like to be loved by Jesus. So I want you to... um, you know, connect now with with your community groups or whatever. I've got two questions for you. Number one is this. How are you managing to fuel your devotion to Jesus? How are you fueling your devotion to Jesus right now? Maybe you can share some ideas or tips or encouragement in that. And the second question is that is then how have you been able to serve those around you, your neighbours, your colleagues, your friends? Have you been able to serve them? Have a think about that, maybe share some ideas and tips. But in a nutshell, devotion to Jesus creates extravagant action. Let's do that.